Education is under attack in so many different ways, but one of the elements of education that's being targeted very specifically is sex education. Settle down, class, before you get all giggly. We're going to talk about exactly what sex education encompasses in a minute, but first I want to talk about how it's being attacked, because it's really straightforward. Governments are taking part of the curriculum and making it easier to either opt into or opt out of. It's already happened in Saskatchewan, and it's happening in Alberta. And while it hasn't happened yet anywhere else in Canada, I would be completely unsurprised if it was. Blaine Higgs in New Brunswick has already targeted sex education providers with misinformation. Doug Ford raised the whole panic about the sex education curriculum in Ontario, only to replace it with one that was functionally the same. John Rustad in BC has made it very clear that he's going to target sex education. Like, this is a very common conservative line of attack. It's the moralization of education. It's parents thinking that they can somehow control the behavior and morality of their kids by controlling what knowledge they have access to. They believe somehow that the knowledge of the existence of human sexuality is enough to spur someone into becoming sexually active. Because when you learn about something, you immediately do it, which is why I became a Roman soldier when I was 12 years old. They also believe that sexuality should be taught in the home, although evidence tends to show that those parents don't actually teach about sexuality at home. And this is typically, but not always, driven by conservative Christian values. A lot of the anti-sex education messaging is coming from Christian advocacy groups or politicians who cite morality reasons or moral concerns, and they very overtly cater to Christian communities. Remember when Poiliev did a presentation in a church? It gets a little complicated because the people who are concerned about sex education in schools aren't charity monsters. They are coming from a place of sincere concern, and I get it. They care about kids and want to keep them safe. They believe that childhood should be a time of innocence, and I appreciate that. Nobody wants to see young people running to be sexually active or act irresponsibly. Nobody wants to see that happen. We all want young people to be safe and smart, and some folks think that the way to prevent dangerous behaviors in young people is through moral instruction, by making them believe that being sexually active is morally wrong. Problem is, that doesn't work. Try to remember being a teenager for just a moment. If somebody tells you very specifically not to do something, would you listen? And so the approach sex education in public schools tends to take is more about risk mitigation. It's about addressing the realities of things, helping young people to understand their bodies, relationships, and safe behaviors. And a lot of the concern is driven by people not actually knowing what sex education teaches. They're worried that it's somehow teaching kids how to have sex. And it's not. There is no lab component. It gives young people the knowledge that they need to make safe decisions. That's it. Schools pretty expressly stay out of any moralization about sexuality. It's not really our business. So let's take a second and look at the sex ed curriculum. One snag, in Saskatchewan, it doesn't actually exist. I teach in Saskatchewan, and when the directive came down to send parents a message when you were going to be teaching sex education and provide them with the opportunity to opt out, they immediately realized that the problem was that there was no sex education curriculum. It was a component of different curricula, like health and social studies and phys ed and a couple of other things. And so the first thing the ministry had to do was figure out when they restrict sex ed, what sex ed was. It was sort of a ready, fire, aim situation. So we're going to look at the Ontario sex ed curriculum, grade by grade, because it's laid out overtly, just to see what they actually teach kids. Because it starts at grade one, and people are going to freak out when they hear that, but just give it a second. And it's not even categorized as sex education anymore. It's called human development and sexual education, because it covers a really broad category. So, grade one. They identify body parts by using proper names, use positive language to describe their bodies, talk about their senses and how they function, and learn healthy hygiene habits. I see no issue. Grade 2. They learn about upcoming changes to their body, like losing baby teeth, and how to prepare for those changes and think about them positively, and how to communicate with a trusted adult whenever they feel confused about their bodies. They also learn about the stages of human development, like infancy, childhood, and adolescence, and to appreciate what their bodies can do. In grade three, they learn about healthy relationships and consent. And to be clear, this isn't in the context of sexual consent. It's about things like personal boundaries and communicating needs, like not getting hugged when you don't want to be hugged. It also talks about bullying, the factors that affect development, and the things that make each person unique and how to respect those differences. How dare they teach those things? Grade four, they learn about the physical changes that will happen during puberty and how personal hygiene needs may change during puberty. And before you think this sounds early, in grade four, kids are about nine, which is the younger side of the window where kids tend to enter puberty. It's perfectly reasonable to learn about what's going to happen. It's not sexualized, it's just this is what your body's doing. In grade five, you learn about your developing understanding of yourself and your personal identity, including things like your body image, sexual orientation, and more. You learn about the reproductive system, menstruation, sperm production, and the stresses of puberty. In grade six, they learn about the impacts of viewing explicit media, the changes that they may go through during adolescence, and how to make decisions in their personal relationships around respect. And they learn about stereotypes. Grade seven, 
to be 12 years old. They learn about sexually transmitted diseases and how to prevent them, as well as to make sexual health decisions. This includes things like delaying sexual activity until they're older, consent and how to communicate it, and how to clearly communicate and understand decisions about sexual activity in a healthy relationship. That's it. And the research is very clear here. This is the age when that information is necessary. Each kid is different, but some kids begin entering relationships at these ages. In grade 8, they learn about things that can affect their ability to make safe and healthy decisions about sexual activity, where to go for support, for resources about sexual health, and they learn about gender identity expression, sexual orientation, abstinence, contraception, and consent as well as the benefits, risks, and drawbacks of different degrees of intimacy. In high school, there are some smaller components around things like preventing pregnancy and STIs, but sex education is much more limited. That's it. That's the whole deal. That is what people are breathlessly panicked about. And while people often freak out about third-party institutions being brought in to teach this stuff, it's because a lot of teachers don't have a lot of training or background in this subject and would like to bring in an expert to make sure that kids get accurate information. It's pretty straightforward. And the benefits to teaching this are clear. It reduces teen pregnancy rates. It reduces STI rates and way more. And it teaches young people to understand their own bodies. It can be a lot less awkward for a trained teacher to initiate these conversations than it is for a parent who may not necessarily know when or where to start. And so I've taught sex ed many times and the way that I've always liked to frame it is as a jumping off point for the conversations to have at home. The teacher goes through the technical details, the nuts and bolts. That was a cheap joke, but you know. And the parents could talk to the kid about their values and beliefs. That's where the roles fit. But there is an enormous risk to not giving sex education because when young people don't learn about things like boundaries and consent, it can put them at much higher risk. Like, there are case after case after case of young people who have been able to share that they were being abused after they learned through health and sex education classes that they were being touched or treated in ways that they shouldn't have been. It gives young people the tools to keep themselves safe. So the real question we have to ask is, why are governments in places like Saskatchewan and Alberta attacking it? And it's because it's not about actually keeping kids safe, it's about controlling them. In Alberta specifically, it's about using kids as political pawns to try to get a little more support before Danielle Smith faces a leadership review in November. In Saskatchewan, it's Scott Moe trying to garner support before an election next month. They're just using kids for politics. It's all they ever do. 